Hello students, I, Mr. Vishal Shah, Assistant Professor, Krishna Institute of Pharmacy, Karad. Once again, welcome you all to this my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about the one of the important point of the chapter fats and oils, where we are going to study analytical constant of the fats and oils that is the iodine value. In previous videos also, we have discussed about the what is the meaning of iodine value, then what is the significance of this iodine value, also which are the three different methods that are used for the determination of iodine value. As I said that these three methods include the iodine monochloride method, then iodine monobromide method, and the last one is the pyridine bromide method. In previous two videos, we have discussed about the iodine monochloride method as well as iodine monobromide method. Now, if you have not watched my previous videos, just you can check these methods where in detail I have discussed about the what is the principle involved when we are going to use the determination of the iodine value by using this iodine monochloride method as well as iodine monobromide method. Now, in this video, we are going to discuss about the iodine, sorry, pyridine bromide method. So, let's begin with our today's session. Just I request you, if you like the content of this channel, then you can like, share with your friends and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So, let's see our today's session. Now, before starting with our today's session, let's see what are the learning outcomes of this today's session after this session students will be able to explain analytical constants used for the determination of various oils so here we are going to discuss about the iodine value now as i said we are going to discuss here about the pyridine bromide method now this pyridine bromide method is based upon this particular chemical reaction. Now all, if you have watched my previous videos, then you might be familiar with this reaction. Because in earlier two methods also, this reaction was quite similar. That as iodine value is defined as number of grams of iodine that are taken up by our 100 gram of fat or oil sample. Generally, this iodine is added where the double bonds are present in the our sample and fats and oils they are mainly consisting of the unsaturated fatty acids as well as saturated fatty acids wherever the unsaturated fatty acids are there at that point this iodine molecules are taken up now here to check with the how much amount of iodine is taken up by our fat or oil sample just we are going to use the pyridine bromide method where bromine is added first in the location where the double bonds are present. Now here in this case in previous two methods we have used the iodine monochloride as well as iodine monobromide solution respectively. Means what is the difference between these three methods? Here in case of pyridine bromide method instead of iodine monochloride and iodine monobromide we are going to use the bromine this bromine is prepared in the form of the pyridine that's why this method is known as the pyridine bromide method or the solution is known as the pyridine bromide solution like our previous two methods also this method is also based upon the oxidation reduction type of reaction where we know oxidation is nothing but the loss of electron and reduction is nothing but the gain of electron. So here one species is acting as a oxidizing agent and other species is acting as a reducing agent. Here bromine is acting as a oxidizing agent. Now you may wonder that how here iodine will be generated because as I said that this method is based upon the iodometry type of titration like our previous two methods where we know that iodometry is nothing but the liberation of iodine. So, the reaction takes place 
between the bromide ions and the potassium ion which leads into the formation of the iodine. So in C2, in chemical reaction, iodine will be generated and due to generation of this iodine, there will be this liberated iodine is acts as a oxidizing agent. So this is the general principle that is involved in the, this particular determination of oil constant. Now, whenever we are going to use the iodometry type of titration, we are going to use the starch as a indicator and the reducing agent is used as a sodium thiosulfate. In detail, we will see what are the different reactions. Now, here you can see in first step, the whatever the fat or oil sample is there, this fat and oil sample is treated with excess amount of pyridine bromide solution due to which what happens first the some amount of this bromine will react with the this our fat or oil sample depending upon the number of double bonds are present in our sample if one double bond is present then one mole of bromine will be consumed in this particular reaction so depending upon the number of double bonds if number of double bonds are more then more amount of bromine will be consumed and if the double bonds are less then less amount of bromine will be consumed in this way these reactions can be carried out now due to this reaction there will be formation of halogenated fat or oil sample will take place and in addition to that bromide ions will be released now whatever the excess amount of bromine that we have used this excess amount of bromine is allowed to react with the potassium iodide. This potassium iodide is added externally. Now in this reaction, bromine is acting as an oxidizing agent while the potassium iodide is acting as a reducing agent. As bromine is acting as an oxidizing agent, it will be get itself reduced and potassium iodide as it is acting as a reducing agent itself get oxidized. And due to the reaction between the bromine and the potassium iodide, there will be liberation of iodine takes place. And in iodometry type of titration, this liberated iodine is titrated with the sodium thiosulfate. Once again here, liberated iodine is acting as an oxidizing agent and sodium thiosulfate is acting as a reducing agent which is figured in the butyl. Now in iodometry, see there is a difference between the iodometry and the iodometry. In iodometry, as I said, iodine is liberated, while in iodometry, we are going to use the standard solution of iodine as a our titrant. But here in this case, sodium thiosulfate is used as a titrant. So that's why this is the iodometry type of titration. Now so this is the chemical reaction takes place between the potassium iodide and the bromine. Here just I have represented iodide because potassium iodide in solution exists as a K plus and I minus. So here iodine, iodide ions which are acting as a reducing agent, they will act on the bromine which leads into the formation of the, this liberation of iodine will takes place. And this liberated iodine is reacted with the sodium thiosulfate. So that sodium thiosulfate will be converted into the sodium tetrathionate in the final reaction. Now, always in case of iodometry type of titration, we are going to use the starch as an indicator. This starch is added towards the end point because what happens? Iodine and starch complex that is formed is not that much stable. Starch is consisting of two portions, one is the amylose, other one is the amylopectin. Now, amylopectin which will form the bluish violet color with the help of the complex with the iodine. And this is the reason why the initially when our solution is consisting of the iodine and if we add the starch, then there will be formation of blue colored complex will take place. But as this complex is not stable, first when the solution is having the brownish color due to the liberation of iodine, we are going to start with our titration 
and when this color is changed to yellow then we are going to add the starch so at that time there will be formation of blue colored complex will takes place as soon as we continue the titration with the sodium thiosulfate we will reach to the one point where our solution doesn't consisting of any iodine because all the liberated iodine will be titrated or reacted with the sodium thiosulfate so after this point or beyond this point if we add a single extra drop of sodium thiosulfate as our solution is doesn't consisting of iodine only our solution will be having this starch and starch will show a colorless so that's why we are getting end point as a blue to colorless in iodometry type of titration so in this way we can use this particular method that is the pyridine bromide method to carry out the determination of the oil constant that is the iodine value now after completion of principle we will see the what is the procedure involved in this particular pyridine bromide method now first point dissolve about the 1 gram of accurately weighed sample in a dry 500 ml of iodine flask and add 10 ml of carbon tetrachloride or chloroform to dissolve the our sample as we are going to use the fat or oil sample here we are going to carry out the dissolution of this sample into the chloroform or the carbon tetrachloride after this we have to add 25 ml of pyridine bromide solution allowed to stand for 10 minutes in dark and then add 20 to 40 ml of potassium iodide solution and 100 ml of water here whatever the quantity of pyridine bromide that we are going to use that is the 25 ml of pyridine bromide solution here this excess amount of pyridine bromide solution is utilized out of 25 ml some amount of the this pyridine bromide solution will be reacted with the our sample and some amount will remain as it is and whatever the bromine that is remaining it is now reacted with the potassium iodide so that due to the reaction with the potassium iodide and the bromine iodine will be liberated shake and titrate the liberated iodine with 0.1 molar sodium thiosulfate using starch as an indicator which is added towards the end of titration as i explained that always when iodometry type of titration is there starch is added towards the end of the titration now you can note the number of ml that is required which is known as the burette ring as a and repeat the operation by omitting the substance being examined and note the number of ml that is required for the b why we have to carry out the this titration by omitting the sample so that we will know the exact amount of bromine that is required to react with the our sample for that purpose we have to carry out the back and blank titration so this is the procedure by which we can carry out the determination of iodine value now so here we have completed with the method that is used for the determination of the iodine values including all three methods so this is the question for you you have to go to this particular website use this code and give the answer for this particular question thank you if you have any queries related to the pharmaceutical organic chemistry then you can contact me on this particular email id also if you like the content of this my channel then you can like share with your friends and subscribe to my youtube channel to get more videos related to the pharmaceutical organic chemistry thank you